Hello, assistants, collaborators, and the PCA candidates. May the Lord God bless you greatly in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we are here once again in preparation for Saturday as we are going to have the General Assistance Meeting, the Saturday of Intimacy with God. Yes, and uh, we are doing this purpose uh, since the last assistance meet, uh, the general assistance meeting we had last month. And then we are preparing ourselves because I believe that this Saturday, this coming Saturday, it will be a blessing to us. As you can see, we have here the oil because I am praying. We have been praying for the servants of God. So, and uh, we're going to continue this week actually praying for you so that the Spirit of God may be with you and you may have intimacy with God. Okay? So, I would like to ask you now to let me know where you are watching us from. I can hear, we, uh, by the way, we are live here. And I can see many assistants from all over the country. They are now connected. You can type here in the section below where you are watching us from. So, and uh, later on, I will uh, tell you, so I'm going to tell something really, really powerful. Remember that we are uh, doing the 10 signs that... Uh, leads the 10 signs that you may soon stop being an assistant. So, because we don't want it to happen with you, we are doing this, this series so that you may understand, you may be conscious, more conscious about these 10 signs. I'm going to conclude, as today is the conclusion of this purpose. And, uh, of course, in this program, there is something we are going to reveal to you about what is going to happen this Saturday, how it's going to be, how you have to prepare your spirit. I'm going to play this video now that talks about social media, internet, and as you know, many people today, today the internet connected uh, people to each other. So the internet is very good. You being in the UK, you can connect to the person, your family member, which is living in another corner of the world. Easy, peasy, you can do so. But at the same time, people also get distracted to the point of forgetting the real world. So, let us watch this video and invite more assistants, the assistants from your branch, to connect here. It is common to search on any subject, only to come across a person's image someone who provides their experience on the specific subject. Many times this public figure draws in crowds of followers and therefore they become respected and a reference in many subjects. To understand what leads millions of people to follow the so-called influencers, a study was carried out in 2019 which analyzed the behavior behind the likes and shares. 57% of those interviewed said that they follow celebrity profiles because of their tips on traveling and shopping. The study also revealed something interesting. Of those interviewed, one in five revealed that they felt closer and more intimate with an influencer than they do with their real friends. Nonetheless, are the influencers you follow intimate with the values you believe in? A content creator myself. Um, what influences me to follow them is the type of content they put out, if it's aspirational to me, um, if it's entertaining as well, that is a big factor. But aspirational, um, I love people that are doing well in their careers, so I follow a lot of career content. Um, it's really good educational source. I think that's the difference that social media has kind of had in the last 10 years. I went from entertaining to like edutaining, do you know what I mean? 
Yeah, I think mostly, honestly, I don't really use Instagram. Well, I really only use Instagram for social media. And when I'm using it, I'm not using it to follow influencers so much because I don't think it's very, like, they don't have a lot of contact. It's quite vacuous. So I don't really want to fill my brain with that thing. So I mostly follow, like, my friends and people I have a relation to. Or I follow, like, a lot of, like, philosophy accounts, for example. Just, like, getting more, like, information pieces. I don't really want to just, like, see someone else's life. I don't think it's super healthy. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I don't follow any influencers. Um... I use social media for educational purposes, so I follow um, academics that are known as authorities in particular fields, so I, write, I like to read about, about what, what they're writing about those issues, especially like inflation, the changing global economy, and just to understand issues that are emerging and what the authorities in the field really have to say about these issues. I guess, like, what, what they post and like I guess at the moment like moral standpoints as well like what, what they're standing up for and what they're mentioning in the platforms that they have I mean I guess to a certain extent who other people are following and then also like what appeals to me and like what, what I think is cool and the sort of like like morals that I might uphold that they might have similar to me I guess following someone on social media is not a casual choice however some people unconsciously open their eyes and minds to live with the thoughts and behavior of an influencer. On social media, football player Neymar Jr. is one of the most followed people in the world, with just over 221 million followers on Instagram. On his profile, he shares his lifestyle, his routine, and even his opinion on current matters. Singer Taylor Swift also draws a multitude of followers, with a total of over 550 million followers across various social media. The artiste shares behind-the-scenes moments of her artistic life, her performances on stage, new releases, and also defends her sometimes controversial points of view. Her mass influence on people has even earned the nickname The Taylor Effect, where everything she does, wears or says affects sales, subscriptions and even political opinion. Now, what about those who want to be intimate with God? Surely there are people and content on various social media that will help them down this purposeful path. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. For those who live a purpose that is distinct in its servitude to the values and commandments of God, certain influences may no longer be relevant in their lives. Considering all this, and by analyzing the profiles of the people you follow and the content you consume on social media, would you say that you are closer or further away from achieving intimacy with God? Yeah, and talking about social media, how influencers sometimes they, they have the, the power they have to influence people, to tell people what they have to do. And the people do it. And the people don't hesitate to do what they are saying. People simply jump into their ideals. People just jumped, uh, like they just simply do what they say without thinking properly. And that those who are intimate with God, they simply obey the word of God. How has been your relationship with Him? How is your relationship with God? And this is why we are going to have, we are preparing ourselves this whole week and preparing ourselves for Saturday now at 3 p.m. for the Saturday of intimacy with God 
So, and you, you should prepare, you should be ready, you should uh, 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 prepare everything, your Bible, you should prepare your spirit, you should prepare your card to bring with you. And uh, by the way, on Saturday, I would like you all, you bring a bottle of oil. I'm not saying for you to buy a one liter uh, oil, no, no, just like a small bottle of oil. We're going to bring it to the assistance meeting for the purpose we are going to do, what the purpose we're going to do this Saturday, starting this Saturday. It's going to be really powerful. Okay, make sure to tell the assistants, the ones who perhaps are not connected now, so that they may bring on Saturday at 3 p.m. either here in Finsbury Park or outside London for those who um, those will the assistant from outside London, they're gonna go to their local branch and bring this bottle, the small bottle of oil on Saturday to our assistance meeting. As you know, we, uh, two weeks ago, two weeks or three weeks? Three weeks ago, we started, two weeks ago, we started the, this purpose, this series of the 10 signs that you may soon stop being an assistant. So, so far we spoke about six of them and uh, today is the conclusion of it, which we are going to associate or connect, I would say, to this purpose we are doing, which is the, the purpose, the month of intimacy with God. So let us take a read now. Let us meditate on the seventh sign. The seventh sign is exhortations, corrections, and the discipline are no longer tolerable for you harboring grudges and the similar feelings, similar feelings have become something natural for you. you know, one of the signs that the assistant spiritually is going down, it's that they do not accept the, the corrections, the corrections from the Holy Spirit. You know, when you are doing wrong, and that you listen to the Word of God, the Word of God corrects you and that tells you what you have to do and you simply ignore it. So that's a sign that you are coming down. And usually people who avoid correction, they hold on grudges, feelings, Hold on, as you can see, as you ju we just read uh, through this seventh sign, harboring grudges and the similar feelings have become something natural. Unfortunately, natural for some, for many servants. That's the seventh sign. Let us take a read. Let, let us take a look now on the eighth sign. You have been using your position as an assistant, and what it represents before the church members to your advantage. You have been using your position as an assistant and what it represents before the church members to your advantage. The true servant doesn't care about position. Of course, we'll never take advantage of the position they may have in the church to take it they do never take advantage for the for because of the position to do something to take advantage of members to do to go for the shortcomings he never but a person who is not is, is going to a spiritual decline that's the first thing they will take, they will always, they will always take advantage on their position. And that's the eighth sign. Let us go to the nine. Let us take a look now at the ninth. 
you believe you have the you have the right to impose your authority and a demand a special treatment due to the length of time you have been in church yeah i've seen this happening already actually all these signs that we're talking about i have seen a lot and because of the time because of the time they have the time because they have been as an assistant for many years they want to impose their authority shout at people or even you know do things that doesn't make sense so as for those who are for many years as a servant as an assistant they have to be even more patient don't you agree they have to be even more patient with the others because the others they have to understand that they are new they are learning but as for us my, myself in, in, included inclu included we are we, we who are so many years have to be more patient have to you know exude the fragrance of christ so there is no need to impose your authority on anyone and the last one is you are developing friendships with people who openly ridicule the word of God. You have become indifferent to uh, opponents of faith, of the faith, I would say. One thing is to know such a person. Another thing is to be friends with that person. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is a thing which is repeating. So having friendships, hanging out with people who are not the same faith as you. It looks like the church or me, we want to control you. No, you do whatever you want. You are free. You, assistant, you, doesn't matter. Even myself, I am free. Everyone, we are free to do whatever we want. But remember, we're talking about here, we're talking about the signs, the signs, the 10 signs that will lead that person, that servant to, to leave the work of God. So, who are my friends? My friends are those of faith. So, because they talk about, we talk about the same subject, we talk about the same thing. So, who are my friends? The assistants of the church the pastors, the bishop of the church. They are my friend. So we talk about things of faith. Uh, bishop James, he even speaks a lot of, about this. That uh, we sit, when we sit down, we are always talking. When Bishop James <clears throat> and the pastors in the rainbow, uh, and even when all the pastors of the UK we are together, we only talk about things related to the faith. Yes, the Word of God. So, but if I have friendship with a person who is not of the faith, that person talk about drugs, women, women, I would say, talk about games, talk about things that are not related. So, and eventually, because I'm so close to that person, I will, you know, have the same kind of topic. Friends, I was reading something this morning. I was meditating. Actually, I was, I am meditating in this since Saturday. And yesterday I shared a little bit here with the assistant in the rainbow. And today with the meditation that I had today, this morning, I could like put it together to share to you. Look at this. The Word of God says, The secret of the Lord is with those who fear Him, and that He will show them His covenant. Again, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear. 
so secret, the secret of the Lord. There are things you reveal it openly, but there are things that you only reveal to some people. There, are, they, you know, there are things you select the person that you can say, and there are things that you only say it to God. The Bible says that the Word of God says that the secret of the Lord, the secret, in other words, He reveals His secrets. He, he shows things deeper when one has relationship with God. So this is not for everyone. This is not for every single person. Like, you know, to have like the deep, the, what, what is profound from the Word of God. Sometimes the person gets the Bible to read and they understand nothing. But when one fears the Lord, the Lord reveals Himself to him. Look at this. The same verse, the same verse, the same verse that we just read here. Now, in another translation, I think that's the contemporary, I, for, I forgot, Jewish translation. Let us take a, a read. Let's take a look. Adonai, Adonai means the Lord. The Lord relates mm, <laughs> intimately with those <laughs> who fear Him. He makes them know His covenant. Adonai, in other words, the Lord relates intimately with those who fear Him, with those who, you know, with those who really that person fear. I'm not talking about religiosity. I'm not talking about attendance in the church. I'm not talking about position in the church. No, I'm talking about you fear, you honor, as we started this Sunday, the, the Sunday of honor to God. So the person who honors God, the person who has a power of a deep, a profound relationship with God. So the Bible says, Adonai means the Lord relates intimately with those of you. Ah, that's so powerful. Look at this. And now to conclude, one more verse, one more verse. Look at this. The Word of God, and now the assistant in the rainbow, they will remember this verse that I shared with them yesterday. The assistants uh, and the PCA. Let's take a read. Let's take a look, I should say. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not. <laughs> For God took him. Do you know the kind of relationship? Enoch, he walked with God. Meaning that he... He, the kind of relationship he had, it was so deep that the Lord said, mm -mm, not you. Ah, you, you not die. I'll not allow you to die. And by the way, uh, one verse before this, this is verse 20, 24. To the verse 23 says that he was not like a, 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 a 20 years old. Look at this. Take a look. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. He lived a lot. He lived a lot. Ah, uh, and these 365 years, how did he spend it? How did he spend these 365 years walking with the Lord? Do you know what is interesting? I already spoke about this here, but I'm, I'm going to say it again. How many, they cannot have a relationship with God for 10 years. They get tired. That's it. Yeah. They are 10 years in the church. They are tired. They are 20 years in the church. They are tired. Not everyone. They are five. They are people. They One year. They are a year in church. 
they got tired, they get tired. And Enoch, could you display there for us? He spent huh, 365 years serving God. And then what the Bible says, 24? 24 now? You don't have, you deleted. So the 24 says he walked with God and that he was not for God to kill him. In other words, Enoch, God's, in other words, let's, let us paraphrase it. God said, Enoch, you are 365 years serving me. You honor me with your heart, with your mind. Remember what, what was said in the church yesterday? If you were in the rainbow, Bishop said in the churches as well, you have to honor God with our thoughts, with our feelings, and with our behavior. Right? Remember that? This is what Enoch used to do. It was Enoch's behavior. Well, that's so deep, that's so powerful. Nothing happens by chance. Do you want to be used by God? You. Do you want to be used by God, assistant? Collaborate, PCA. Do you want to be a blessing? Walk with God. Walk with God. Could you display the verse again of uh, the Jewish version? Again, Adonai means the Lord. The Lord relates intimately with those who fear Him. Fear the Lord, respect Him, serve Him, honor Him, and the most definitely, it's going to happen. Well, this is it. We are coming out to the end of one more program. And remember to bring the bottle of oil on Saturday in the assistance meeting. May God bless you greatly. See you on Saturday and next Monday as well. God bless you. Good night. A love like this No one has ever loved me like this You're the only one Who gave his life for me A peace like this I've never had a peace like this I know that you are here Your spirit moves within my heart But who am I A simple servant yours I know To touch the garment of a king The garment of Jesus But who am I that you should listen to my soul with all the angels praising you in heaven before your throne? like this No one has ever loved me like this You are the only one Who 
gave his life for me. A peace like this, I've never had a peace like this.